The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the fifth year of the reign of the Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Echerea and Trachonitis, and Lysenius, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel from Luke tells the story of the coming of John the Baptist, the precursor, to Jesus, and in the minds of many, the last prophet before Jesus's arrival on the scene in Galilee and in the regions around Jericho and on his way to Jerusalem eventually. The scene that we have today comes before the baptism of Jesus, that moment in the Gospels when we know that the baptism signifies the uniting of the spirit of Jesus the man with the spirit of Christ that comes from God with the Holy Spirit and the uniting and the de declaration of the sonship of Jesus as the Christ. Now, the region in which this is taking place is, as it says, the region in and around the Jordan and the wilderness. And as we have said on other occasions, this region is about 3,000 feet below the level of Jerusalem. And so when Isaiah and the prophets and the gospels say, make the low places high and the high places low, they're really talking out of what they know. The leveling of the highs and the lows are not just physical, but they are symbolic and spiritual as well. I don't know about you, but when I receive communion, I sometimes come to the altar rail and I feel really, really good. I feel really, really full of myself, if you, if you want to put it that way. And I receive communion and all of a sudden I feel like I've been leveled down. On other occasions, I may just not feel very good about myself or about things around me or in my family or among my friends. I feel low and I go to communion and I feel raised up. Again, I feel leveled. This I believe is at least in part what we are promised through our belief and our faith in the gospel of Jesus. That those things that make us feel high 
can be brought down to a level where they should be. And those things that make us feel low can bring us up to a level that we should be. So that we have the experience of this union, this communion with Jesus as the Christ. As we prepare ourselves in Advent, let's keep in mind this phenomena of bringing the low places up and the high places down so that we can be even and level and be prepared to receive Christ, but also to join Christ in the life that is offered to us. Amen.